Hey, this is Nick with another Builder Trend tutorial. Today we're going to talk about fixed price contracts versus open book contracts. And this is something that Builder Trend is really sensing the environment of the industry and understanding that a lot of us are doing more open book contracts. And so they made the ability for us to do that within Builder Trend. I want to share with you how the two are different, whether you're a customer or you are a builder, remodeler yourself. Understanding the difference is really, really important. Both contract types have their place, but again, the industry is moving a little bit more toward open books. So let's talk about how Builder Trend takes care of that. So just to just recap what's going on here, they're embracing this open book contract. So you're able to toggle between contract types, something you weren't able to do before. I would say that in the past, Builder Trend has been set up primarily for fixed price, kind of your more standard projects, okay? Your job costing calculation will change depending on your contract type. So depending on whether we have a fixed price, or an open book price contract, the job costing features within Builder Trend are going to change based on that selection that you make. And you have to make sure your parameters are locked in, most notably the markup that gets accounted for with an open book contract. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit and I'm gonna show you what I mean in Builder Trend itself. So what is a fixed price contract? This is a little bit self-explanatory, kind of intuitive, but just go over it here. Basically you set the price for the entire scope of work. You say, here's the work we're gonna do, here is your price. Now that price might have some built-in flexibility, some variability in what's called selections or allowances. So within that price, maybe the entire project, we think $100,000, that's your price. Baked into that is a certain amount in allowances or selections. For example, your kitchen cabinets. So you might say your, the price of your project is $100,000. And within that, we've assumed that your kitchen cabinets are going to cost $25,000. Now that's a specific area where we're going to go shopping. We're going to help you shop for those kitchen cabinets. If we spend a little bit more than $25,000, that marginal increase will go on top of the $100,000. If we spend a little bit less, it'll be deducted from the $100,000. So that variable change will be accounted for. And then beyond that, it's change orders that are exclusively used to change the price of a project. All right, the price doesn't change without the change order being issued. So we're gonna do this work or there's this surprise, we need to increase the price or decrease the price based on what we have found or what we've decided to do as a whole. So the calculation for a fixed price contract, pretty easy, it's your contract price, it's something that we decide ahead of time. Plus or minus change orders, plus or minus selections. Really easy, really straightforward. And Builder Trend does an amazing job of putting these, these items in their proper buckets and giving you this calculation for a fixed price project. And they always have. What has changed is now they give us the option to do an open book contract. So with an open book contract, your estimate is for budgeting purposes only. Now, very important for an open book contract, you should always still be estimating. Don't think that you're just gonna go into an open book contract and just say, all right, we're just gonna see what the costs are and whatever they are, they are. I think that's unfair to your customer for sure, but really from you as a builder, you want to have a budget no matter what. You wanna be able to track your estimating abilities, right? How did I estimate? How did we actually do? So you, so you still want to do an estimate even if you're doing an open book contract. It's gonna be easier to sell to your customer and really important for you to be able to track your your success against your budget over time. Your price is determined on the actual cost that you incur. The builder should continue to track and monitor the budget throughout. Again, you know, just because we had an initial estimate and now we start doesn't mean we can just stop looking at the budget. The customer wants to know, how are we doing against our initial estimate? Change orders can and still uh, should still be used, but they're not as critical. And I think this is important. A lot of folks think that with an open book contract, there's no need for change orders. We'll just do whatever we need to do, and then we're going to bill that, and we're just done. I think it's important to use change orders, specifically when scope is changing. It helps with your documentation to understand, yes, we've all agreed to do this extra work. It's going to cost this much money. It really helps you if you're trying to talk to your customer about, hey, why did our price increase? Well, we had all these change orders, right? If you don't have those change orders in place, it's kind of a harder conversation to have all these unexpected costs that you didn't properly estimate for. If you execute the change orders, it really helps you with that narrative. Also referred to as cost plus or time and materials projects. So if you hear an open book contract talked about in that way, they're all pretty much the same. Okay, so um, open book, I think is a really nice way of, you know, cost plus and time and materials. Sometimes the customer gets into the markup a little bit too much. I think open book is a really good way of talking about how transparent these types of projects are. So the price of an open book contract is relatively easy as well. It's your actual costs plus an agreed, agreed upon markup. So you as the, the builder are going to incur some costs, material subcontractors labor, and you're going to have an agreed upon markup that the customer knows about that's included in your estimate 
that is going to be added to those costs to give you the final price. And again, Builder Trend now allows us to do that. I'm going to show you how we can set this up within the system. Let's go to Builder Trend and check it out. So here I have this job here. And as it starts, if I go to my job info, right up here is where we have the option to indicate whether it's a fixed price or an open book project. And you can see right now it's a fixed price project. Now a fixed price project in Builder Trends is really going to need this contract price in there. Hopefully this is coming from your proposals, but even if you do your proposals outside of BT, you can still add your contract price there. That's really critical. Add your contract price all the time. So we have our contract price. And then as I mentioned, there's two variables that can then adjust that contract price. If I go to my owner invoices, um, I have my job running totals at 303,423. How did we get there? Okay, so Builder Trend gives us this job price summary. Okay, and that's made up of any marginal increases or decreases to the price. So there's my contract price. Approved selection difference is plus 15,000. Approved change orders is 49,000, giving me a job running total of 303,000. So these are the three factors that go into that. And the selections are all managed here in Builder Trend. So we have our allowances and then we have our spending against those allowances that give us our total and our total difference. All right, and then we also have our change orders as well. So these are the change orders that have been approved for a total of $49,000. Okay, so they do a really good job and that's relatively easy to understand. When it comes to job costing, and if you are giving your customer access to the budget here, you may or may not do this. I'd say for a fixed price, it's less important to do, but you still might want to. The uh, amount, this revised owner price is always just going to be selections versus change orders. Okay, and that's gonna change as you're gonna see when we change it to open book. Let's do that right now. So let's change this, this project from a fixed price contract to an open book. Okay, so I'm gonna make that change. I'm gonna save this year. Now, it's really important with an open book contract, you have to set your markup, okay? And that's gonna come from your contract. Your contract's gonna say, here's our estimate, but we're gonna track actuals. When we do track actuals, we're gonna mark up at this percentage, okay? And you're gonna to wanna to add that markup under options here. There's your percentage type, there's markup. Now you could calculate based off margin. They're actually kind of the same thing. They're just going, they're not the same thing, but they go in reverse. I do markup and then the margin is the yield of that. If you wanted to achieve a certain margin, it would give you the appropriate markup to get there. So it's just two ways of thinking about it. So we, we do a markup and we do pretty much a, a blanket 35% with the exception of labor. So labor, we're giving a cost per role that's gonna work on a project. And then you're gonna add your cost basis for all of your labor into the back end of Builder Trend as well, into each user. And we've established a, a about 100% markup on our labor. Now this changes from project to project as well, a little bit. You think about like a carpenter might cost you $35 an hour, but you might be billing at $70 an hour. So that market rate means that the, the um, markup is higher here. Okay, and that's pretty common. Doesn't have to be 100 necessarily, but that is, that's a pretty common situation for, uh, for labor. So I've set my parameters and now I have an open book contract. So the first thing that you might notice with an open book contract is that if I go to project management or if I go to jobs and go to job price summary, it no longer gives me that, um, that summary there. It, do, it will show me selections, it will show me change orders and we should still use them but the price is not gonna be determined by that. So that doesn't really help me too much. What the price is determined on is this revised owner price over here, okay? And this now takes into consideration what our either expected or actual costs are plus our markup, okay? So projected would be if we haven't finished something yet. So let me collapse this up. <clears throat> so demolition. I've got a revised budget cost of $24,000, actual cost of 17,000. And so um, Builder Trend is going to assume that we're gonna spend this, this 3,700 here. And that means my price is gonna be 33,019.12 cents. Now, if I were to mark this complete and say, I'm done with this, I'm done spending no more actual costs here, you're gonna notice that that revised owner price is gonna go down because Builder Trend understands that, hey, we didn't spend this total revised price. This is what we spent and we're done with it. We got nothing left to spend and the markup's gonna apply just to the 17,000, 
right? Now I have a separate video altogether that we really dive into the intricacies of the job costing budget for an open book project. Definitely check that out. Uh, but I just wanna go over generally where, where it shows up here. And again, the change orders are still really useful. Okay, so notice we have an original budget and revised budget. What is really useful is that the change orders in the selections, they help to inform this revised budget. So at any given time, this was what we originally did that never changes, that gets locked. But then when we make selections or we um, have change orders, so if we look at Rough Electrical, that was my original bid there, or my original estimate. I have a selection and I, and I have a change order that are going to increase my total revised. Okay, so there's now my revised and that's gonna show then my revised price here. Now I do wish, and I think they'll improve this soon, they show, I wish they would show a revised price versus owner price, just do that calculation for you. They don't do that currently, but that would be nice. And so on these, you would then invoice as incurred. I have a video on that as well. So invoicing off of an open book project, definitely check that out as well. But understanding the toggle between fixed price and open book is really, really helpful to understanding exactly what Builder Trend can do. And again, these are the project types that we're all doing nowadays, a lot of open book stuff. So I wanna know your comments and I wanna know your questions. What hurdles have you run into in setting up Builder Trend? Or if you're a homeowner and you're unsure of how your builder is communicating, go ahead and ask a question here as well and we can maybe give you some answers or maybe give you some suggestions for your builder to do things a little bit uh, more accurately. I'm looking forward to your comments and let me know how I can help you in the near future with Builder Trend or anything within QuickBooks as well. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.